How much do you know about the history of Rome? What do historians have to say about it? Hello and welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we will discuss Roman historians on the founding of Rome. If you want to know more, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel because we have a lot to share. Are you ready to go back in time? Romulus and Remus, two brothers and demigods, are considered by many historians with founding ancient Rome on April 21, 753 BCE. They assert that Romulus killed Remus, and renamed the city after himself during a dispute over who should control the city. Although it is not the sole account of Rome's founding, it is the most well-known. Other historians believe the city was called after a woman named Roma, who accompanied Aeneas, and the other Troy survivors on their journey after the city was destroyed. Roma and the other ladies resisted when the men wanted to leave, after landing on the banks of the Tiber River. She organized the ladies to burn the Trojan ships, which essentially trapped the survivors in the future location of Rome. As the founder of Rome and the ancestor of Romulus and Remus, Aeneas of Troy is mentioned in this narrative as well as prominently in Virgil's Aeneid, connecting Rome to the splendor and power that was once Troy. Other ideas about the name of the famous city, contend that it was an Etruscan word, that may have referred to one of their towns, or that it was derived from Roman, the ancient name for the Tiber River, and was simply a place name given to the modest commercial center formed on its banks. Period of Kings, 625 to 510 BC. From the time that Rome was founded until 510 BC, a period in Roman history known as the Period of Kings was in effect. This period lasted for the entirety of Rome's existence. During this brief period, Rome, which was ruled by no fewer than six kings, made significant military and economic advancements. These advancements included an expansion of Rome's physical borders and military and increasing the production and trade of various goods, such as oil lamps. In terms of politics, this time period witnessed the beginning stages of constructing the Roman constitution. The decline of Etruscan dominance marked the end of the period of kings and marked the beginning of the Republican period of Rome's history. Republican Rome, 510 to 31 BC. 510 BC marked the beginning of Rome's Republican period. The elite strata of Roman society, specifically senators and equestrians, sometimes known as knights, took control of Roman administration after the country was no longer ruled by kings. This new type of governance was formed by the Romans. Nevertheless, in times of crisis, a dictator can be chosen to rule. The Romans devised a uniform set of laws known as the Twelve Tables in the year 451 BC. These laws were intended to govern public, private, and political concerns. During the period known as the Republican period, Rome continued to develop, and by 338 BC, it had established authority over the whole Italian peninsula. Rome was able to acquire control of Carthage and Corinth, allowing it to become the preeminent naval power in the Mediterranean, due to the Punic Wars which took place between 264 and 146 BC. These wars also involved minor confrontations with Greece. Not long after that, the political climate in Rome led the Republic into a period of anarchy and internal conflict. This ultimately resulted in the election of a dictator named L. Cornelius Sola, who held power from 82 BC until 80 BC. After Sola stepped down as dictator of the Roman Republic in 79 BC, the country again descended into chaos. Julius Caesar's rise to power in 60 BC marked the beginning of the transition from republican to imperial rule in Rome. This occurred despite Rome's continued to be administered as a republic for the next 50 years. By the year 51 BC, Julius Caesar had successfully conquered Celtic Gaul, and as a result, Rome's borders extended beyond the vicinity of the Mediterranean Sea for the very first time. Even though it was still Rome's governing body, the Senate's power gradually declined over time. In the year 44 BC, Julius Caesar was murdered, and his position as dictator was passed on to his heir, Gaius Julius Caesar Octavianus who co-ruled with Mark Antony. In 31 BC, Rome achieved victory over Egypt, leading to the assassination of Mark Antony and establishing Octavian as the unopposed ruler of Rome. In Rome, Octavian became the first emperor when he accepted the name Augustus, and became known as Augustus. 
Imperial Rome, 31 BC to 476 AD. In 31 BC, the ascension of Rome's first emperor marked the beginning of Rome's imperial period, which lasted until the decline and collapse of Rome in 476 AD. This period was Rome's final one. During this time, Rome enjoyed decades of peace and prosperity, which allowed the city to grow and flourish. The Roman Empire had achieved its zenith by the year 117 AD, when it had expanded to cover the majority of three continents, including Asia Minor, Northern Africa, and the majority of Europe. A division of the Roman Empire into Eastern and Western Empires, each of which was headed by its own emperor, took place in the year 286 AD. The Western Empire was subjected to a number of Gothic invasions, and was subsequently devastated by Vandals in the year 455 AD. After that, Rome continued its descent into decay until the Western Roman Empire's demise in 476 AD. It wasn't until the 15th century that the Eastern Roman Empire, more usually referred to as the Byzantine Empire finally fell. In 1453, the Turks took possession of Constantinople, now known as Istanbul in Turkey. This led to the fall of the empire. Titus Livius Livy, whose full name in Latin is Titus Livius, is one of the three great Roman historians, along with Sollust and Tacitus. His history of Rome was a classic during his own time, and it had a big impact on the style and ideas of historical writing all the way up to the 18th century. Livy thought that the history of Rome shaped the people who lived there. He thought that history should not only teach but also improve the person who reads it. This is what some people called moral education. Dionysius of Halicarnassus about Rome. According to him, the first people to settle in the area that would later become the city of Rome were the Aborigines, who originated in Arcadia and were responsible for the expulsion of the Sicels from these lands. Following the Aborigines were the Pelasgians, who originated in Thessaly. Next came the Epians from Melis and Phenites from Phineas, who were part of the army commanded by Heracles and decided to stay there while returning from the expedition at the Erythia, with whom a Trojan element was also mixed in. The third group consisted of those who accompanied Evander into Italy from the city of Palantium in Arcadia. The very last group to arrive were the Trojans, who along with Aeneas, had made their way out of Ilium, Dardanus, and the other cities that belonged to the Trojans. Dionysius highlights that the Trojans were also people of Greek descent and originated in the Peloponnesus. He further adds that even Romans think that Palantium was founded by Greeks from Palantium of Arcadia, some 60 years before the Trojan War, and that Evander was the leader of the group that established Palantium. Later on, during the 16th generation following the Trojan War, the Albans merged these locations into a single community and fortified it with a wall and a ditch. The Albans were a nation that was a mixture of all of the peoples as mentioned earlier. Dionysius adds that a barbarian element from among the people who lived nearby, originally inhabited the area was mixed in with the Greeks. Latins came to be the name given to all of these people after they had lost their tribal history. This name was given in honor of Latinus, who had previously served as the kingdom's monarch. The identical twin brothers Romulus and Remus emerged as the colony's primary leaders. Dionysius also mentions the fact that many other historians believe that Aeneas constructed the city after traveling with Odysseus from the region of the Molotians to Italy. And he named the city Rome after a Trojan woman who convinced the other ladies to set fire to the ships so they wouldn't have to wear any longer. This is how he came up with the name Rome. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel for more interesting videos. Thanks for watching.